Welcome to Candle Cove, where a mysterious children TV show appears, and only the children can see it. On October 11th, Sci-Fi released the first of six episodes of Channel Zero, Candle Cove, which is Hollywood's adaption into Creepypasta's very own Candle Cove, which is written by Chris Drops. Creator and showrunner of the TV version is Nick Otashka, and I gotta say he did a great job adding his own twist into the Creepypasta story. Now on to the show. If you haven't watched the show, here's your last warning, because I'm about to go deep into details. Are you ready? If you haven't signed off, here we go. In the 1980s, in the town of Iron Hill, children went missing and were brutally murdered. The children's murders went unsolved. The only clue was a children's TV show called, you guessed it, Candle Cove. And only children could see it, while the adults only saw static. Now for those who don't follow Creepypasta, you might be wondering, what is Candle Cove? It's a puppet show that centers around pirates. The main villain puppet is a skin taker, whose name was changed to Jawbone on the TV show. The mystery behind the TV show and the murders of the children is the main plot of Channel Zero, Candle Cove. Now let's fast forward to present time. The main character is child psychiatrist Mike Painter, who comes back to Iron Hill to investigate who was behind the 1988 Candle Cove murders. His twin brother Eddie was one of the victims from the 80s. After a long hiatus from the town he grew up in, Mike returns to Iron Hill, and as he returns, the TV show mysteriously reappears, brainwashing the children of Iron Hill, turning innocent children into murderers. The leader of the pack is a school teacher, Francis Booth, whose son Jacob was also one of the victims from the 80s. Not by coincidence, Mrs. Booth also happens to have the puppet show in her own basement. But is Francis Booth the main culprit of Candle Cove? In the episode of Guests of Honor, Francis Booth reveals to Mike and his mother that the power behind Candle Cove was his dead brother Eddie, and that Eddie was coming back to Iron Hill through Mike's body. Say what? According to Mike, when they were kids, the show Candle Cove is what gave Eddie his special powers, who would then use his special powers to kill his bullies and anybody he sees as a threat. Mike confronted Eddie over this issue, which ended up in a fight that accidentally killed Eddie. However, Mike is wrong. It turns out Eddie always had the powers, and he is the light, and he created Candle Cove with his powers. During a panic attack, Francis Booth was healed by Eddie. Admiring his powers, she learned from Eddie that his powers needed to be fed by the blood of children. Mrs. Booth would then go on to sacrifice her very own son Jacob to Eddie. Now to the conclusion, Mike's daughter Lily has been kidnapped by the Tooth Child, who turns out to be Eddie. To rescue his daughter, Mike will have to let the Tooth Child enter his body. The final showdown between the twins is about to go down as we enter Eddie's head, the true darkness behind Candle Cove. And during the same time, Francis Booth is confronted and killed by Deputy Welch and Marla Painter. I actually find her more evil than anything on the show, and I'm glad she got hers. Back to the final showdown between the brothers. In Eddie's head, we find the true meaning of darkness. From skinless faced children to the true appearance of Jawbone, and his name turns out to be Skin Taker. Eddie released Lily, but in one condition, Mike has to stay while Eddie takes his place in the real world. In the real world, Eddie and Mike's body, who's a child psychiatrist, would be a nightmare scenario. To prevent Eddie from coming back to the real world, Mike and Eddie's mother, Marla, suffocates Mike's body to death, preventing Eddie from coming back, but also killing Mike at the same time. Indeed, it was a hero's sacrifice which was always Mike's plan from the beginning. A sad ending, but very well written. But is Candle Cove really over? Mike and Eddie might be dead in the real world, but if we learn anything from this season, both Eddie and Mike are not really dead. Both Mike and Eddie will spend the rest of their lives in Eddie's darkness. My guess playing the card game that never ends. Eddie still has the power to reach the children, but this time Mike will be there to stop him. Just like what we saw at the end of the show with Lily. When the Candle Cove TV show appeared on her TV screen, it was Mike's spirit right there to turn it off. Mike Painter, being the good twin, gives balance to the darkness, thus ending any future harm on the children of Iron Hill. So what do you guys think about the ending? I do like the idea of the school teacher manipulating her students with a puppet show in her basement. Ah, but the whole Eddie Painter special powers thing, I have to admit is a little bit out there for me, but it was a good twist. These are just minor complaints, not really a big deal. But I do wish they showed the Tooth Child more on the TV show. The idea of the Tooth Child being fed by children's teeth is just outright chilling. Overall, this was a terrific show, and it was fun to go through the mystery of Iron Hill. Horror Squad rates Channel Zero Candle Cove an 8 out of 10.
If you haven't checked it out, I highly recommend Channel Zero Candle Cove, and in my opinion to date, is the best Hollywood adaption of a creepypasta story. Turn into Season 2 Channel Zero, which follows another great creepypasta story in the No In House.